Hello ladies and mostly gentlemen, I'm Vinny B and the plan was to build a road cage for the Smart Booza using my old, not well built, tube bender. Unfortunately, or fortunately, but I broke the damn thing at the first bend. Ay ay ay. Well, to its defense, it was the first time I was using it to bend DOM tubing with thick wall. So yeah, I'm back on the drawing board to design a new one. Is it over-engineered? Probably. Is it overweight? Most definitely. And to build it, I'm gonna exclusively use parts that I already have in the shop. So this thing's gonna cost me absolutely nothing. Yet zero, nada, absolument rien, or rien. All right, so let's go. Quickly, I just want to explain a bit my design. Well, I had a revelation, a vision, after I slept and bumped my head against the sink while standing on the toilet to hang a clock. That's the first time I saw it. The flux capacitor. Uh, wait, uh, no, that's in the movie Back to the Future. Well, no, I actually combined good ideas from different vendors. From the M610, made by Rogue Fabrication, which I think is the most popular bender used by other YouTubers, and probably the best one. I took its quite long distance from pivot points, thus creating a long lever, and also the ability to reposition the bottle jack top pivot point, maximizing the pushing capacity of the bottle jack without increasing internal tensions in the frame and also giving the capability to do 180 bends. I picked up from the Pro Tools MB10 5HD manual bender the rack or cum shaped bar that they use to reposition quickly the pry bar. I also threw a couple of good ideas and lessons learned from my first bender. And I finally packaged all those goodies in a shape more like the Eastwood Proformer, which from the reviews I read online is a really, yeah, really bad bender. But I like this compactness and how everything is easily accessible. So there you go, this is the 57 design version of a tube bender. I may sell the drawings on this one, but first I need to test it properly. So maybe I'll put a link down below when the testing phase is done. Good, now I'm gonna take care of that bump I've got on my head while we jump right into the build. I start up by machining the bushings. It actually felt pretty good being back on the lake. Uh, because some of you may know, but lately I played a lot. I mean a lot with vacuum farming plastic. Ugh. So I didn't have much opportunities to machine parts on the lake. These bushings will be used for the two main pivot points. One is for the die and the other is to hold the bottle jack. Meh, gonna give me a bit more room than that. That's too tight. Ah, perfect. I did machine three more bushings for the frame. There's one here, 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 and here. But since it's the same old process of facing drilling and boring, it's, uh, yeah, it is boring, so I'm gonna spare you with that part. All right, now I need to cut some tubing. So yeah, let's play that sweet, sweet B-roll, would ya? That was smooth. <clears throat> All right, um, after that, I need to drill holes in the tubings to receive the bushings. And I'm gonna play for the first time with my boring head on the mill. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm, I'm just a big kid. It's freaking Christmas every month here.
like this, and like that. Oops. And it should... Yeah. That's why you always just stack it first. Much, much later. Remember when I said the bushings were a bit too tight? You know, like four minutes ago? Nah, gonna give me a bit more room than that. That's too tight. Yeah, once weld in place, uh, the bushings will move it around and yeah, it's gonna reduce the fit with the shaft. So always have that on your mind. Everything you weld will move, always. It was true before the Egyptians and their pyramids, and it's still true today. So yeah, think about it when you build something involving welding. Yeah, it's gonna move on you. And also remember to use welding gloves. It's me again. The to bender requires an inverted bottle jack. So to create one, we need to sprinkle mechanical dust fairy inside of that thing. Tap tap. One eternity later. I'm still not done. And I just cut apart. Remember, work smarter, not harder. Mm, better use your head. <laughs> well, that kind of worked. Yeah! All right, let's start working on the die. This is the existing die that I made a long time ago for the first version of the two bender. It is made of multiple quarter inch thick plate that I welded and bolt together. Then I chucked this big chunk of steel on a big lathe. And with a really sketchy setup, I machined that round section. 
I just removed the reinforcement bars that I had it back then because I'm gonna add some quarter inch plate to it because I want to prevent the die from opening up and creating that uh, more flat and oval shape of tubes while I'm bending it. Back then to drive that uh, die I choose a flat surface instead of the more common keyway. It hold up pretty well but now I need a round hole in the die. Alright let's head to the mill where I'm gonna try to put back in a round hole then I will machine and weld the hub and do some other mechanical trickery that uh, you typically see me do. To the mill! Alright, now I need to plasma cut the extra plates that I want to add on the die and also the flamey, geary looking plates that I want to use for the ratcheting motion with the bottle jack. Yep, those ones. As promised, I only use plates that I already had in the shop. And yeah, half an inch, it's really heavy. Where's my skyhook when I need one? Then I drill and bore all the plates with pretty much the same process you see me do for now a good 6 minutes using an old saw and my new boring head. Did I mention how much I love this new boring head? Well I really love my new boring head, but don't tell my wife. It was time to assemble the plates and the die together, but that was not so simple to do. This thing was quite heavy. Oh, that's gonna be heavy. Yeah, yeah, I know, I, I just said that. Ah, oh, whatever. <laughs> it is! <sighs> Almost 85 pounds, just for the die. <laughs> yeah, I told you guys uh, this thing was stupidly heavy, but you know, I won't race with it, so yeah, sometimes heavy must be good, right? But don't tell my wife. I kinda created myself a French Canadian guillotine. Not the cutting one, but the squishing one. So I added a latch just in case. Let me show you what happens if I forget to put the latch on. Ooh, ouch. After fine tuning everything together, it was time to fully weld the frame and to apply a fresh coat of paint. Let's do that B roll again, please. Ah. And there it is in all of its glory. There's only one little thing left to install and it is the bullet. I'll explain it in a moment, but for now I wanted to do a test without it to see if the added plates on the die could help the flattening effect. Without the bullet, quite flat, right? See how stretch it is? Let's try it with the bullet. Gladly this first test run reveals some flaws in my design but nothing that a grinder can fix. And now for the bullet. I saw this device on some really expensive benders. Typically it's gonna be one or two balls. It goes inside the tube and forces it to keep that round shape while it's bending. It's something I had to develop on the first tube bender, having so much problems with the flattening of the tube. All right, let's do a proper test now. We will go the full 180 degree, this time with the bullet. And for your information, this is a one and a half inch tube with a 1/8 wall. So let's go. Oh, 
Would you look at that? 180 degree, round. Oh, that is a beauty, guys. That is really a beauty. Let me show the flat one without a bullet, with the bullet. There's absolutely no wrinkles inside. It looks like it's been banned by a really expensive uh, two bender. Freaking free. But damn, whew, it's hard on the arms. Oh man, there you go. I will definitely change that. All right, spoiler alert. But there's gonna be a part two of this build. Also, I will fit, once again, Another die to this machine. This one is a two inch. Also quite heavy. Why everything so heavy in this episode? <laughs> and finally in the next episode, I will push the limits of the two bender. Even maybe to the breaking point. And try to bend these two inches tubes. Now, I'm really pleased with the way the bender performed and I think I should reward myself with a mega paint. If you agree with me and you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing and leave a like. Alright, hopefully we're gonna see you pretty soon on episode 2 on the two bender. But till then, go do something with your head, your hands or both. See you guys. And I really need to rush myself because racing season is at the door. Ah, shit.